What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech and today we are going to work on adding a virtual box VDI disk to your Proxmox host. So if you started off your home lab maybe with Oracle's virtual box and now you're ready to move it over to a virtual machine in your Proxmox environment or maybe you're going to school and your professor or whoever gave you an assignment and it's to work with VirtualBox and you don't really want to work with VirtualBox because you have a home lab server that you could spin up your own VM with and work with a lot easier. This tutorial is going to show you how to set it up. I actually had this happen uh, with one of my classes. I'm working on the seed labs for cybersecurity and it's based out of Oracle's VirtualBox. There's other ways to try to install it but it didn't work out nicely so I was able to take the VDI file and put it into Proxmox and make a new host out of it so I found a nice write-up for it so I'm just gonna do a walkthrough of how to do it so we're gonna get right into it so this is the write-up that I found it's from David Yin's blog and it's very straightforward it's very clear but I just want to go over make a quick video about it because I couldn't find any when I was looking so the first step you're going to need to do is get the VDI file in your root folder. So you're going to have to get it on your actual Proxmox host. So the easiest way to probably do it is either use WinSCP from whatever machine you usually work off of, and then you could just S you could just FTP it over to your your host Proxmox machine, or you could try to wget it and put it onto your Proxmox machine. So if I come into my Proxmox host. I'm going to go into my shell. You can see it's already in there. This is my VDI file that I'm going to work with, and it's at my root directory. So here's my c.vdi, and there's the root directory that I'm working with. So we're going to work with that. So after you get your machine to have your VDI file you need, we need to make a new VM in Proxmox. But when we do it, we're not going to give it any media. We're just going to make a blank machine pretty much, so let's do that real quick. So you want to try to match what the system you are worked with in VirtualBox needs. So for me, the VM, that the Oracle VM, needed two cores of CPU and about 4 gigs of RAM. It also needed a larger hard drive, but we're going to detach the hard drive and add a new one, so this hard drive space doesn't really matter, I think. I haven't really seen an issue with it. So we're just going to set this up real quick. Uh, this, actually, I'm, I wasn't paying attention. This, we're not going to do. We're going to click over here, do not use any media. So we're not going to add, so it's going to use an OS, because we're not going to use an OS. We're going to add a hard drive that already has an OS on it. We're going to click Next. Now you're just going to set up your system real quick. This, we can leave default. Now we're going to set up the machine. So I'm going to come over here and give it some space. I'll give it 50 gigs. But when we detach the hard drive and add the hard drive back, it's going to change it. Click next. I'm going to give it two cores. And we're going to give it 4096, minimum 1024. I like to do this so it can balloon. It doesn't have to use all the, it has a minimum memory allocation that it can use if we want. Click next, we're going to leave the network the same. If you have different network cards or if you need different settings, you can change stuff like that, but the basic settings are going to work for this. And we're not going to start it after it's created because we need to detach the drive. So we're going to click finished. We're going to give it a second and here it is coming up. So in the meantime, we're going to come over here. So now after we have that done, we're going to have to come over and detach the hard drive. So we're going to do that right after this machine pops up. So if I come into hardware of the new machine, we can see here's my hard disk. And this is something just to take note of. So it's going to be local TAC TB. Yours is going to be different. It might be local LVM. And it's actually mentioned in the write-up. So you can see in the command you need to use the local LVM. So that's just saying that, hey, when you insert the disk again, that's where it's going to be. So just keep note of that. So we're going to detach it. I'm going to click yes. And now you can see it's unused. So now we're ready to import the disk. So we're going to use this QM disk import command. So like I said, here is my VDI file at my root directory. 
So we know where it is, so we're going to use QM import disk, and we're going to come back over to the machine, and we're going to see what number it is. So it's 108 for me. So it's going to be 108 where it is. And it only works if you use a slash. Hit tab. And then we're going to add local tech TB. And again, this is going to be whatever yours is. So if you have local LVM or you have something else, so it's just local, that's what yours is going to be. But mine is local TB because I have a terabyte drive in there. So now after you have that command typed out, you're going to hit enter. And it's uh, not going to work because it doesn't like it doesn't like it because I didn't capitalize the local so we're gonna fix that and now you can see it's important the disk so this could take a few minutes or it could take up to an hour or so it mentions that in the write-up uh, it depends on the strength of the machine hardware and how big the drive is I'm importing an 80 gig drive and it takes about maybe five minutes or so so we'll come back when this is all done so now you can see it says it's successfully imported the disk and if I come back over to Proxmox it's disk 1 and I'll specify that in the command so it's telling you it's successfully imported disk 1 so this is your old disk and this is your new disk so now the only thing left to do is add the disk to the machine and like it says in, the mach in this write up we're just going to click on it and add it so we're going to come over here, we're going to double click on the disk, and it's going to see, you can see it says add unused disk. We're going to leave everything how it is. We're going to add it, and now if I come over here, here's our new disk. We can remove the old disk because we don't need it anymore. So it's going to run the, the command, it says it's done. And the last thing to do is to come over to options, and we're going to go to the boot order. We're going to edit the boot order so our new disk is at number one because we want to boot off the hard drive we don't want to boot off this other stuff we're gonna click OK now we can start the machine up and as long as we did everything right the machine will start up you can see it's going through and this machine is a Ubuntu machine it like I said it's running the seed labs on it so when you if you're not familiar with the seed labs they give you a VDI file pre-configured with all the settings they need to do the labs and you can see Ubuntu is loading up right here. So I could go in and I can log right in and I have access to my machine and we're good from there. You can enable RDP and now you have a machine that you can RDP into. So we'll do that real quick too. So this is our new machine that's running. So if we want to just enable RDP to finish it up, we can open up a terminal real quick and I want a sudo apt update it's a little slow in the beginning just running but after the machine starts really getting going and you restart it it runs very smoothly it could just be how this VDI is uh, but I'm gonna run these commands real quick and then we'll come back and set up RDP alright so my machine was a little out of date so it had a lot of updates to do but now we're gonna finish and set it up so we can get to RDP into it, so we're going to do sudo apt install xrdp and it's going through the installer, I want to click yes and we're going to install xrdp real quick and then after this is done we're going to enable it so it's just about done and here it is so now we do sudo syscuttle enable xrdp um, just kidding, it's sudo system cuddle enable xrdp and there we go so now we can grab the IP and this machine is dot 57 so we'll RDP into that real quick so we'll do RDP uh, 192.168.50.57 when you go to RDP into a Linux machine, you can't be logged into it, so I'm going to log out real quick. I'm going to click log out. I'm going to close out of my console. And if this works right, I should be able to. And here we are, it's asking me to that. So we got in. My username is seed, and that's my password. And you can see we're going to give it a second. 
and we're going to be able to RDP into our new machine. It's going to ask me to authenticate. And here is our new machine that we just set up by adding the VDI to Proxmox. So the machine functions just like it should. It probably could use a reboot since we just did a whole bunch of work to it. But I could open up the terminal. I can open up Firefox. And we'll give it a second to boot up. There we go. And you can see this is actually the lab that I'm working with. So it, has, it opens you up to, right to the website. It has all the labs. It's very cool stuff to check out if you're interested in learning some more cybersecurity stuff. A ton of different options, and you could just install them on a VM and go with it. And now that you have this, you can make your own VM instead of using Oracle's virtual box. So the VM all works, so we'll close that out. So that was a quick tutorial just showing you how to take VirtualBox's VDI files and put them in a Proxmox host and set up RDP for it. it it's pretty simple. Uh, there wasn't a lot of tutorials when I was looking for it, and I just happened to find that little write-up that we used. And of course, I'll put the link to that in the description of this video. And I'll also throw the Seed Lab link in there. It's It's been a good project. I've been working with it for about a month of this semester so far, and there are lots of cool projects, and everything's set up perfectly for you. So simple video. I just wanted to share it with you guys because I think it's good to know. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.